have our recruiters, our police recruiters, that is now, concentrating on recruiting blacks and browns. And we'll begin uh, with the areas around Dallas and hopefully uh, recruit in the police service from these areas in sufficient number. If we can, of course, we'll go out to uh, campuses uh, in other areas outside of Dallas, even outside the state if we have to, but our concentration will be now in recruiting blacks and browns in the police service. And we uh, de-emphasizing the need for our recruiters to work with whites and telling them to concentrate on blacks and browns. Will you reject qualified whites who come to you for uh, work? No, we will not. We will not reject any qualified applicant who comes to us for work as long as there's an opening in the Dallas Police Department. So if a white comes in and applies, he's qualified, well, he will be hired. Uh, uh, and we will not reject anyone who's qualified. You were recently quoted as saying that you had had it with trying to talk to the brown and black community because of disruption when you do attempt to speak. Uh, is this a fact, and do you think that will have any bearing on your recruiting? Well, I did not uh, say that I'd had it with a black or brown community. I said I'd had it with a brown beret, a small militant group who uh, I feel uh, serves no useful purpose in trying to better relationship between all segments of the community. And I don't think they're really sincere in trying to better things for everyone. So I'm, I've had it with them. Uh, but I certainly have not had it with, uh, with by the majority of the community, black and brown. And I want to work as closely as possible with those people in an effort to improve our relationship. So I think that uh, my position uh, from the very beginning, and especially now, Will, uh, will help our recruiting effort and enhance our effort to bring into uh, police service blacks and browns, qualified blacks and browns. Why did you decide on Hawaii? Oh, I just always wanted to go there. I thought it was just a heavenly place. Do you have any children? Two. Two girls. Are they there in Hawaii? There. No, they never have been. They're here in Dallas. How long will you be in Hawaii? Fifteen days. Are you excited about going? Oh, real excited. Are you apprehensive about flying? No. Not a bit. Love it. <laughs> Are you afraid of flying, Mr. Parsons? No, ma'am. Not at all. This isn't your first flight then. No, no, I've got to start right over time. What do you want to do most when you get to Hawaii? What? What do you want to do most when you go to Hawaii? I just want to see everything and see it to see it.
what a sweet privilege to cross the lake on which thy blessed feet did tread the waters. And what a happy, glorious time to break bread together where the waves of the sea lave the shores of Galilee. not reduce the ratio unless we do one of two things. I don't know exactly what the board will decide, but I do know I think uh, a judgment has to be made as to whether it endangers the security of the country. I suppose those who classified it felt that it could endanger the security of the country. Uh, I have read that which heretofore has been published in the New York Times, and I don't find anything all that alarming about it. Uh, I think the worst thing that can happen as a result of its publication would be that it might undermine confidence uh, among people in this country as to what the government really is doing. It shouldn't if they read it carefully because there isn't anything in there that indicates in any sense that there was a deliberate plan to escalate the war contrary to public pronouncements. some white pupils into those grades in Dalworth School and at the same time perhaps move some of the white of the black pupils in those grades out of Dalworth into other schools. Now the exact percentage of people or the numbers of people we're bus in and bus out I do not know but there's no possible way of changing that ratio. Of course, there's always an alternative. 
of closing down the Dower School and busing all pupils out of Dower into other schools. In terms of uh, better educational opportunities for the Mexican-American uh, children, I think that this may be the beginning of a very, very realistic program. We feel very strongly that something has to be done for the Mexican-American uh, children, where we have in the Dallas School 78.9% dropout rate. The traditional methods by this dropout rate are indicated as being obsolete and not workable, so we have developed a totally new approach to the education of the Mexican-American kids. Uh, we are not talking only about bilingualism. Bilingualism, or uh, knowledge of two languages, becomes nothing more than a vehicle, in our way of thinking, for concept development, which in turn becomes an instrument for a more important factor, and that is the development of a positive self-concept. That's what we are shooting for. We may even have psychomotor epilepsy as a defense in it. I don't know if there's some indication that there may plead that. Mm -hmm. As a result of the Ruby trial, don't you consider yourself somewhat of an expert on those charges? Only thing I can remember on that, I got tired of looking at those charts because they roll them out in front of the jury that went on for six weeks, and I think I was like the jury every time uh, the lawyer for the defense would roll those out. I kind of hated to look at them, but I'm, I'm not a, an authority on psychomotor epilepsy, but I have heard experts testify on both sides. Mm -hmm. Which uh, of the defendants do you anticipate using this defense? A Guzman. We found the back door of a man's bait shop and then jerked completely off and then stuck back in the hole. We called the dispatcher and he notified the owner. And the owner was en route over there. He picked up two subjects. And when he got to the scene, we had a money sack that come out of his car that he thought he recognized with two boys that evening who had been doing business with his wife and we went inside to call her to get her to identify him. And while we was inside, Officer Grenville was outside with the boys and they standing there back at the car, they broke and ran. They ran through about three, four hundred acres of underbrush, swam Muddy Creek, which is part of Lake Ray Herbert. And about three hours from the time we started, we apprehended them over off South of Ship Road. You know, after four years, uh, the ABA now is going to be playing exhibition games with the NBA as part of a prelude to a full merger, which we are very confident it's going to happen. And that first game uh, is against the NBA champion Milwaukee Bucks here in Dallas, September 21. And uh, we're just extremely excited about having uh, Al Sender and Robertson and uh, all the Bucks come into Dallas. I would guess that uh, you're anticipating a full house for that one, or at least hopeful of the same. We certainly are. We, uh, we're, we think that this is maybe one of the most significant basketball happenings in Dallas ever. And so uh, we think that uh, people will want to see it. Bob, have you set uh, where the game will be played yet? Uh, no, we're really not uh, prepared at this time to make an announcement on that, uh, uh, but uh, in the next few days. You've got Milwaukee of the NBA. Would you anticipate any other uh, NBA clubs in exhibition games? Yes, we, we hope so. We're talking, Vern, to uh, a number of other NBA clubs uh, about the possibility of working out an exhibition. Uh, I'd say that uh, the uh, one closest to coming to fruition would be the, with the Chicago Bulls. Well, you not only have got an exhibition game set, but uh, an announcement about your radio contract. Yes, uh, we're pleased to uh, make the announcement that we're moving the Chaparral broadcast to WRR. Uh, we're also, of course, obviously pleased to say that uh, Terry Stembridge, who will continue to do the play-by-play -play as he's done for the past four years on the Chaparral game. 
This will be, as I understand it, Bob, a two-year contract? Yes, we've entered into a two-year relationship with WRR, and uh, as I say, we're very pleased about it. I felt since leaving the White House that although I was not involved in foreign policy during this particular period uh, that is in controversy at the moment, that fuller public discussion and greater, greater confidence in the people's ability to discern uh, between what is good and bad policy would have been in order. I think that's true of every administration. As more of these documents are published, I think we will see that it was not just the, doc the Johnson administration, but every preceding administration since Harry Truman that has a responsibility for deepening the stake of the United States in a pro-Western, non-communist uh, government in South Vietnam. proposition every day. You, you just, uh, you have little parts and big pictures and big parts and little pictures and you went right from one to the other. And I always felt that the only way to learn how to act is to act. And so many people nowadays that because uh, of a lot of reasons uh, sit around and talk about it, but they don't get that experience. changed from another city and uh, this attorney down there asked me to help him and I thought it would be a good idea. It's probably the worst murder we've had since the Ruby trial actually where you handcuffed and shot the three deputies mm -hmm. and I thought I should be there. Will this be your first court action since the Ruby trial? The first case I've tried, I've been in court and on a number of hearings and things, but actually not all in a jury trial, a complete jury trial. Mm -hmm. I'll be there all during the you know, trial or so. Do you see any parallels between the two cases? Well, uh, expect out of the defense attorneys. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I actually don't know where. Actually, we'll be in a different county too, which makes a lot of difference. But. Uh, I don't believe they've had the coverage uh, news-wise or television-wise that we have in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you expect this to be a long trial? Well, I hope we can get it through in a week, 10 days. You anticipate it being that quick? Maybe in two weeks, anyhow. Mm -hmm. What about jury selection? What are you going to be looking for? Just the best men we can, men and women. Mm -hmm. You'll be seeking the death penalty? Yes. We'll have death penalty on both of them. Mm -hmm. What would be your primary evidence upon which you'll base your prosecution? Well, you know, we have two eyewitnesses that are uh, McCurley and the deputy Dover from 
Well, actually, we'll have two eyewitnesses to all of it that will testify. Mm. They uh, are prepared to testify that these are the two men who took them to the bottoms? Yes. I think that one of the reasons we're, or I know that one of the reasons we are promoting the trade center in Mexico City is that in spite of the fact that our exports are growing, our participation in compared to, comparison with other countries is declining. So we must step up our activity. Do you expect any problem from the Mexican president's ultimatum that we must buy more before they buy more from us? I don't think there'd be any problems as far as we're concerned because the products which we will show in Mexico um, manufactured in the United States are those which are definitely designed to improve Mexican industry, to make it more productive, particularly in the export field. So we're really there to help Mexico as much as we are to sell our own products. Well, we have been on the Mount of Beatitudes and heard the words of Jesus. We have visited the city of Capernaum. We have come from Capernaum across the Sea of Galilee, and now we are eating what is called Peter's fish. to criticize a politician than it is for a politician to be criticized. you have to figure that one out a little bit. And you know, we've been doing a lot of reading lately, and a lot of it, of course, I don't believe, and I'm sure a lot of it that people don't believe, but some once in a while you get a real good article. I have a little article here that appeared on the front page of the Galveston Daily News not too long ago that I enjoyed, and I'm going to share it with you. The name of it is in a little box that voters slightly confused. This took place about the time we was having city election for mayor and city council. My intention has been to serve my people the disadvantage beyond the call of duty. But a small coalition of middle-class persons have been allowed to take control of the Community Action Agency and have asked for my resignation. These are the reasons that I see. First of all, racism in Fort Worth. Secondly, they have given no legitimate reason at all for dismissal. This is what we call railroading. There's been no opportunity given for me to respond to the CAA board for any charges at all. This also is the usual pattern of assassination of those who serve black people. It is a mission of failure of the announced, of the unannounced goal of the CAA to control the militant black people.
We believe the settlement of these matters, as well as the settlement of the annexation case, which will forever resolve the question of the boundaries between Arlington and Grand Prairie, will prove to be the mutual benefit of the cities. We are in a growing area with a challenge to meet, and the future does not stop at the city limits line. We must resolve our points of differences so that the world will see a unified region when it looks our way. Through the cooperative spirit exemplified by our councils in reaching these agreements this week, we can face the future with confidence. Governor Smith, I wonder if you could tell us that. Governor Smith, can you? <laughs>